Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Stateline organizations say they still plan on warm meals to the community for Thanksgiving. Coming up, learn how they're going to make sure everyone stays safe. Plus, with Thanksgiving just being a few days away, health experts urge people to weigh the risk of exposure. In a few minutes, hear from Illinois' top doctor on how you might not have symptoms right away. And while there is one holiday tradition in the state line that will still remain, Festival of Lights organizers tell us what's new this year. Good evening, I'm Alexis Carpello. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll get to those stories in just a moment, but first, Wisconsin police arrest the teenager that they say pulled the trigger, injuring a handful of people at a mall in Wauwatosa Friday. A 15-year-old male was arrested. Police say the gun used was also found with the suspect. After investigating the scene, officials shared that it was not a random act and there was no immediate danger to the public. Police were able to use security cameras and photos from the incident to make the arrest. It is important to stress that this act of violence was not a random one, but an altercation between two groups. As often happens in these types of situations, innocent bystanders are injured. Police share that four victims are being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. The Rockford Rescue Mission and a local church still plan on hosting Thanksgiving meals this year. Our Michelle Rave caught up with the organizers to learn how they plan on staying safe while passing them out. 2020 is not going to keep us from celebrating Thanksgiving um, with people in our community who are hurting and who are homeless. Um, it is going to look very different this year. As a way to help those in need during the holiday season, many organizations in the state line host annual Thanksgiving dinners. To keep people safe, the Rockford Rescue Mission is putting a new twist on their tradition. Individuals can come and we have different tents, so we have a meal tent that's going to be set up and people can come in and grab one meal. Court Street Methodist Church is typically packed for their Thanksgiving meal. Now people will only be able to enjoy the meal as carry out. However, this year we have new rules and regulations to follow. We can't serve anybody in our two dining rooms. So we had to rethink the program and making sure that we were still providing a community meal for people. Even though there's going to be less volunteers, that doesn't mean there's going to be a food shortage. Turkey, mashed potatoes, dressing, gravy, vegetable roll, pie, applesauce. Both organizers say it's important for these events to happen because the need is even greater because of the pandemic. I think, you know, this year we just, everywhere we turn, we just see something else that's canceled. Um, and for us, the one thing that just came apparent on day one, you know, when we're told to shelter in place and safer at home is homelessness doesn't cancel. Um, addiction doesn't cancel. And if anything, we've just seen an increase in that. But these Thanksgiving festivities will still be in full swing. There are a lot of people that need the meal and you know it's been the goal of our church that we always provide a meal on Thanksgiving. Our community is our family and just you know this meal is just that important to just celebrating the family of the the community of Rockford. Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Michelle Rave. Illinois' top doctor says families that are preparing to celebrate Thanksgiving this week should think about potential exposure risks. Health experts say many people that have COVID can go 2 to 14 days with minimal or no symptoms at all, making it difficult to know if you're positive at the time of holiday celebrations. Experts say it's important to weigh the risk and to know what precautions to take after the event. Yes, you can be confident that I'm not infectious today and I can enjoy the dinner, but I can't tell you about tomorrow or, or the next day. So unless you have that repetitive screening that was you know, exemplified in, in the professional sports league, you can't really make those same inferences. To check out the CDC guidelines for social gatherings on Thanksgiving, head over to mystateline.com. Now to the COVID cases for today. Just over 10,000 more people have tested positive. In the past 24 hours, 76 more people have lost their life to the virus here in Illinois. That includes two people here in the state line. They were from Winnebago and Ogle counties. The state's weekly rolling average sits at 11.3 percent. Here's a look at a county's positivity rates in Region 1. Overall, Region 1's rate has continued to decrease. The average is now at 17.1%. It was at 
18.2 percent Saturday. Every county in the region besides Joe Davies has dropped. Joe Davies County has a rolling average of 19.1 percent. That's up from 18.5 percent yesterday. The lowest average in the region is DeKalb County with 13.8 percent. We're just a few days away from one of the brightest state line traditions. I caught up with Festival of Lights organizer and he tells me there's nothing stopping this event. We're the original social distance event. In a year full of canceled traditions, Festival of Lights co-chairman Ted O'Donnell says this light show must go on. It's a tradition, so we want to keep that tradition alive. We're open. We are a social distance event no matter what. You're in your car, you're with your family. You don't have to wear a mask in your car with your family. You can come on out, drive through, and be safe uh, for other members of your community. On top of not being canceled, this year the annual festival is dedicated to the memory of John Beck. Plus, there's even more colorful displays to look at. So we decided we would invest more of the sponsorship money that we get into the displays. We, we were raised with Festival of Lights. So some displays that you've seen over all these years got a facelift. You know, we, we went through and uh, we completely rebulbed them and we put different colors on them. So something you may recognize as the shape um, is now completely different and a new feel to it. We're, we're trying to give a different aesthetic and a different feel every year that, that we've had this under our helm. And that's what uh, Uncle Joe wanted. He wanted something fresh every year. and and we're, Tom and I both are continuing that, that concept and that dream of his. A group of 13 volunteers helped put the entire park together. We're out there every night afterwards setting things up in early in the morning and the weekends. And just so we can share the love of the holiday season and share the love of family with everybody else that comes through. Ted O'Donnell tells me Santa Claus will even be making stops there on weekends. President Trump is refusing to concede the election, his campaign filing 19 lawsuits across five states. ABC's Andrew Dimbert shares the details. The coronavirus pandemic is not just taking a toll on people's health, it's also causing economic hardship for millions of Americans. I have some savings, so I understand the value of having some money set aside, but we're going on a year and, and we've got an uphill battle. I'm an essential worker, but I have seven family members that are not working, so it's just, just me. Thousands descending on food banks across the country in order to put food on the table. We've never seen an increase in food demand like we have since March. Tyler Perry Studios in Atlanta hosting TPS Giving, handing out 5,000 Thanksgiving dinners to families in need. More than 21 million Americans are receiving some form of unemployment insurance. The number of Americans filing for first-time unemployment insurance rising for the first time in five weeks. This as key parts of federal aid known as the CARES Act expire only 40 days from now, including expanded unemployment benefits, eased student loan obligations, halted evictions, and foreclosure relief. Now, one key to getting people back to work is getting the virus under control and getting Americans vaccinated. President Trump has refused to concede the election and some Republicans saying it's time to put the country first. As much as I'm a strong Republican and I love my party, it's the country that has to come first. The delay hampering President-elect Joe Biden's transition. Biden's chief of staff believes this could slow down distribution of a vaccine. If there isn't a seamless flow of information now so that we know what we're getting ourselves into, so we know what plans they've made, so we know what gaps there are in the plans, then I do think there's risk that that distribution uh, has gaps and lapses starting on January 20th. But Biden is moving ahead with parts of the transition. He's expected to announce some of his first cabinet picks this Tuesday. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington, D.C. Now, your first warm weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Today is the 22nd. That's what day it is. A live look with our Mercy Sky Track camera up in Beloit, Wisconsin for us. We've got kind of a mix of sun and clouds out there this afternoon, and that'll continue for the remainder of this evening. And even as we go into the overnight tonight, temperatures today made it into the mid and upper 40s, actually pretty typical for uh, mid-November. And those numbers now cooling off a bit. 39 down in Sterling and Freeport, 41 in Monroe, 45 in Rockford, 40. 
40 our temperature in Belvedere and 41 right now down in Rochelle. Our weather watcher Jim here in Rockford checking in with 44 degrees and a dew point number of 33. We've been pretty dry this weekend, kind of bypassed a lot of the rainfall that stayed mostly to our south both yesterday as well as for today. But there is a weak cool front passing through now, which will work to kind of shift that wind around to the northwest. You might notice too over the next couple of hours the wind will be picking up just a bit so it gets a little breezy here for us tonight but we're starting to see some clearing take place back off to the west although another weak system kind of passing into our northwest will leave us with a few more clouds here as we head through the morning hours tomorrow this will actually help clear out our skies as high pressure builds in tomorrow looking like a pretty nice day temperatures just a handful of degrees cooler than where we were today but we will see sunshine and we are going to stay dry the one day really kind of watching this week is going to be Tuesday as we likely see a chance for some snow showers in the morning and some minor accumulations on grassy surfaces before changing over to all rain during the afternoon and evening. That rain will continue then into Wednesday with some thunder potential just a little bit further south into central and southern Illinois. Thursday, Turkey Day looking fine. Temperatures will be back up near 50 degrees, so at least we don't have to worry about any significant weather for Thanksgiving. So let's kind of play in this out here as we go over the next 48 hours. We'll see some cloud cover tomorrow morning, but as high pressure builds in, winds will stay light from the northwest. Plenty of sunshine for tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow evening after sunset, 9, 10 o'clock, that's when we'll start to see that cloud cover begin to work in, a sign that we've got a little bit more moisture coming in with our next storm system. Watch what happens just before sunrise. Here we go at the leading edge of some of that warmer air. We'll likely see some snow develop before 5, 6 o'clock on Tuesday morning. And there could be a couple of bands of some more heavier snow, just kind of the uh, rate of it coming down, and even some slushy accumulations on grassy surfaces as we go through the morning hours. I do not think that that is going to impact your driving for Tuesday morning, but some of that rain and snow and even sleet will continue right along the Wisconsin-Illinois border on northward, even as we get closer to noon on Tuesday. But as our temperatures warm a Above the freezing mark and into the 40s by early afternoon, we'll see that transition over to most for rain. So looking at a mostly rainy day during the afternoon and even going into the evening. Now, as far as any accumulations are concerned, most of this again on grassy surfaces. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we add up maybe one to two inches of snowfall through Tuesday morning. And again, for some that'll last a little bit longer as we head into southern Wisconsin. So our temperature tonight down to 30 degrees. We'll get rid of some of that cloud cover by tomorrow morning. 44 for the afternoon, pretty seasonable. Cloud cover increases late. Sun will come up tomorrow at 657. We're 43 degrees on Tuesday. We do not drop much Tuesday night, though, because we're still pulling in that warm air. Wednesday, temperatures will be near 50 degrees. Thursday, mix the sun and clouds. Highs near 50. We do cool off Alexa, so as we head into next next weekend and even looking into the beginning of December. Thanks, Candace. David's now here with sports. No Bears game today. No, nope, no Bears game. I think we could all use a break from, uh, from them. There's no doubt about that. But we've still got James Robinson and Packers action. Plus, we'll see what Paul Christ had to say after the Badgers lost to Northwestern. That and more next in sports. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with David Greenberg. Bears are on a bye this weekend. I think all fans could use a, uh, a Sunday of them, but there was still plenty of football to be played, and it was yet another historic day for our guy, James Robinson. Robinson carried the ball 17 times today for 73 yards and brought in two catches for an additional 21 yards, a total of just under 100 yards from scrimmage in the Jaguars' 27-3 loss to the Steelers. With his performance today, Robinson officially eclipsed 1,000 total yards on the season, only the fifth player in NFL history to achieve to achieve that milestone, but it gets better. He's the first undrafted player in league history to surpass that yardage number through his first 10 career games. He's making everybody back home really proud, that is for sure. The Packers and Colts are currently in action over on our sister station. They've got themselves a nice little lead here going into the third quarter, 28-17. to 17. As you can see there, Rodgers has three passing touchdowns and Aaron Jones has rushed for one as well. 
NFC North Detroit Lions were in Carolina today. Panthers without their starting quarterback Teddy Bridgewater and all-pro pass rusher Christian McCaffrey, but the Lions still struggled. There's the Panthers, DJ Moore hauling in a big gainer. That set up this touchdown here to Mike Davis a few plays later. Like I said, again, no Christian McCaffrey. Carolina's quarterback today was P.J. Walker, a former XFL standout. He connects with Curtis Samuel here for the score. Panthers go up 14 to nothing. Lions offense really struggled. This was definitely not their day. They get shut out and lose 20 to nothing. Yesterday was a tough day for Badger fans as they watched their hopes of reaching the college football playoff most likely slip right through their fingertips in a 17-7 loss to the Northwestern Wildcats. Despite any officiating mishaps, the Badgers did themselves no favors all afternoon. It's tough to win a ball game when you turn the ball over five times. Just ask Paul Christ. Obviously, when you turn the ball over the number of times we did, um, it makes it harder. And and each turnover adds to that. You know, I think there's times, you know, offensively we did some good things, but we were inconsistent and, and obviously didn't uh, do the things to, to sustain drives. All right, so with yesterday's games, let's take a look at the Big Ten West standings. Northwestern sitting 5-0 and atop there. They've got a nice lead. Wisconsin comes in in second place at 2-1. to one. Iowa's won three straight games, so they move into third place now at 3-2. and two. And Purdue and, Purdue and Minnesota played on Friday. Purdue is at, in fourth place at 2-2. Two and, two, and Illinois and Minnesota are tied for fifth. Just yesterday, Fred Van Vliet signed a four-year, $85 million co contract extension with the Raptors. And in other team news, the organization released on Friday that they will begin their season playing games in Tampa, Florida, as a result of the ongoing pandemic. Some unfortunate news for Raptors fans up north, but definitely the safe approach from the team. That's it for sports.